everyone. Uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Laurent Tutin, my colleague uh, from EMT Atlantic. So a few words about, uh, about Laurent. So he's a professor at the IMT Atlantic, the engineering school uh, that is located in the campus of, of Rennes. He is the uh, co-founder and a scientific advisor for the company that's called Axlio. He worked for several years on IPv6 and participated in the creation of G6 Group, which has been gathering researchers and ind industrials around IPv6 since 1995. His current research focus on protocols and architectures specific to uh, Internet of Things. And from 2011 to 2015, he managed the Smart Grid Competence Center shared by Telecom Bretagne, Texas Instrument, and iTron. So he is the author of several books on networking and communication. So Laurent, uh, the floor is yours. And thank you both. Thank you very much for accepting actually for giving that talk on this occasion. Thank you, Georgios, for this uh, introduction. And thank you also, Kao, for uh, the opportunity to, to have this presentation and also for the title, because initially my title was just uh, Chic and Beyond. So SCSE stands static uh, context header compression, but we pronounce it chic and the future. And I think that the subtitle you, you propose is, is very nice because what we, usually people, when we talk about standard, they say, well, it's a waste of time. It takes too long to, to do uh, a standard. And especially in IoT, when we want to go fast, we uh, sometimes avoid the standardization phase. And in fact, when we see in time, when we want to add new things or change uh, the system, then uh, without standard, it slows down the, the adoption of, of things. So standards are very important. And so I will introduce you a little bit of Chic. And especially, I will not go in much detail about how Chic is working, but I will more uh, focus on the philosophy of developing Chic and what we can do next with uh, this, uh, this solution. So my, my own title uh, would have been, if I can change the slide, where is the disruption? It means that Chic is not just a compression and fragmentation uh, protocol, but there is also some things that may make the internet evolve in a new di direction. Of course, uh, it's just an hypothesis. We have to see how the future will be, but Chic introduced a lot of uh, new features that are quite interesting. So what is Chic? As I said just before, it's uh, a compression and fragmentation framework. And the, the, the word framework is very important because it's not applied to a specific protocol. It's something that is quite generic. And I will explain you in the future why we where we put all this genericity. And it has been standardized by the IETF in different standards. So you have different RFC, like 8724, which is the main standard that explains the mechanism for compression and fragmentation. You have one 8824 that is this adaptation to co-op. And RFC uh, 9011, I will show it after, but is how we can use Chic over LoRa1. So originally, Chic was developed for LoRa1, LP1's network like Sigfox, Narrowband IoT, or uh, LoRa1. But in fact, as we I will show you, it's now uh, there is a trend to use it in other environment. If you want uh, detailed tutorials on Chic, we have two. I put here two uh, links on YouTube that are the tutorial we make for World Forum IoT and uh, with uh, Georgios and uh, other people. So in this talk, I will try not to go more in detail on how Chic works, but more the spirit to design Chic. So the first question or second question is why to go to, to IETF? Because sometimes when I talk uh, with people in the research community, uh, they think that IETF is very complex process. You are going to waste a lot of time to push standards. And in fact, it's it's not true. It's something that is uh, 
quite uh, flexible where you can uh, have fun, develop uh, protocols. You can meet so, so great experts that can help you, for example, in the security part. And especially it's open, which means that you, you can propose something and it can be adopted. And that's what happens with, uh, with Chic. Uh, seven years ago, uh, Anna Minaburo and uh, Alexander Pelov went to a meeting in Yokohama and they talk with uh, the AEGs and they say that there is a new area of uh, in telecommunication that is called LP1. LP1 is not covered right now by IETF standards, so we'd like to create a working group. So the IETF say, oh, that looks interesting. So we are going to create um, just a mailing list where you can coordinate your, your work. And four months after, we made a, a presentation of what we expect to do. And it was uh, well accepted, but the IETF say, okay, but you need now to to have some uh, people that say, okay, your solution is very interesting and you must have a, a return from a different uh, implementers. And we got feedback from uh, Sigfox, LoRaWAN, IEEE, and uh, 3GPP that say that it was an interesting work to do. And so we opened the, the working group. So that's not so difficult to, to do if you can convince people. And so that's what is very interesting by, by VITF, it sees openness and flexibility. Another point that is also important when you look at VITF, it's that it's a central organization, which means that you have other standardization bodies that use it. And for example, if you want to work with 3GPP, it's quite complex, complex because you need to, to be an industry hall. You have to, uh, to travel a lot, pay a lot of fees to, to go to the standardization. But with IETF, we don't have all this limit. And 3GPP will use IETF standard. Uh, IEEE will use IETF standard, which means that if we can push something at the IETF, we can have an impact in over standardization bodies. And so just to, to, to explain this, for example, here we have uh, the ITF. So with uh, the VRFC I explained, which has a standard, and we have the one, uh, 9011, that has been developed by uh, Laura Alliance. And Laura Alliance uh, proposed also its own version of the RFC that is called Technical Specification 10. And now we have a way to push Chic on the Laura Alliance. And this is used right now by the metering industry to connect electrical meter, water meter, gas meter to, uh, uh, to LoRaWAN. And then we can uh, have some smart grids with it. So this has been uh, granted by, uh, recognized by the LoRa Alliance. Last year, uh, this uh, chic has been viewed as the innovation of the of the year for Laura One, and we work also on a test suite to test the, the integration of IPv6 over uh, Laura One. So this is one good example where a nervous standardization body takes the work that has been done at VITF. So we have also some work that are in progress and uh, with a lot of interest for uh, from Sigfox, and we have also. Uh, a proposal, it's still a draft, but it's, uh, it will be very, very soon uh, a new RFC that developed how she can be put over the narrowband architecture. So it's not a way to mandate 3GPP to do it because 3GPP is independent, but it's a proposal and start discussion with 3GPP. And during the last meeting, we had a liaison with 3GPP to, uh, to study the, the proposal. And inside IETF, we have also some, uh, some evolutions. For example, when we create the group, we say that we, were, we are in a star topology just for LP1s. And there was other technology like uh, Sixlow or Sixlow Pan that were for mesh network. And there was absolutely no competition between these two proposals. And now we see that we can have a convergence between uh, mesh network and star topologies. And we are now very some drafts that explain how we can merge chic with uh, six-low architecture. 
There is also some work uh, more globally with uh, all the internet area. And now we, we have requests to get numbers to carry chic over IP, over UDP, over Ethernet even, and uh, to use it in different uh, environment, different usage. And in fact, now uh, we have a problem because the group at the ITF is called LP1, and it's very difficult to rename a group. So what we propose now is to change the meaning of the acronym, and LP1 should mean in the next rechartering, uh, LP1 protocol with any network, which give also LP1. So we, we have saved uh, with that. And in fact, what we see is that uh, the applicability of chic is from constraint network that we want to originally do to now real-time system where the header compression can be a way to reduce the latencies in some uh, specific environment. So with chic, also uh, why Chic is disruptive. So just to show you, so some side you maybe already have seen to explain you what is the main philosophy of, uh, of Chic on, on the internet. So here you have a, a slide that represents the internet. So normally you have a device, your mobile phone, your computer, and you have a lot of applications that are doing a lot of things. So for example, watching this uh, video, but you can exchange mail, etc. So we have something that is very, very flexible and the internet protocol by itself is very, very flexible because it can carry data, voice, uh, images, and a lot of things with, with under the, the same protocol. But if you want, for example, to monitor uh, penguin on the Antarctic, you will not put a smartphone around his neck. What you will do is to define a specific device which will have very limited traffic and very predictive traffic. So Chic arrives here to do header compression and just send what is changing in this very specific traffic. To do that, we need to install compression decompression at both ends. And to do compression decompression, we install a context and the name chic is static context either compression because both of them has a, uh, a context that for the moment doesn't change. So here it's the main idea, but if you look at this, we can go to a dead end because if we change a device, then we don't want to change everything, reduce the standardization. So that's why when we develop chic, we make something very, very generic so that doesn't talk about IPv6, doesn't talk about any protocol, but takes the protocol just as a list of fields on which we apply some operations. So here you have an example of a rule. So a rule is something that describes a traffic. And if we find that something match with a rule, instead of sending the information contained in the rule, we will send the rule number on this way we have a very, very important uh, uh, compression and a very, very high compression if everything or most of the fields are very, very deterministic. So here we have this. So how we define this in a generic way? So we have a protocol and the protocol is divided in fields and each field has a field ID. For example, IPv6 version can be one example. Then we have a length in bit, for example, four bits for uh, IPv6 version. Then we have a position. So in IP or UDP, you don't have this, but in, for example, in co-op, you can have some URI uh, UR, uh, path that is up split in different elements and the same field can be repeated several times. So here we give the position. So one for the first occurrence, two for the second occurrence, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have something that is more specific to star topology because we can say this field can be present in the uh, up, uh, uplink traffic, in the downlink traffic, or can be present in both uh, direction. For UDP, IP, we have a symmetry, but with co-op where it's a REST request, then in one way you send a URI path, for example, and you have a response in the other way. So the traffic is not uh, really symmetric. So all these fields, that uh, all uh, these uh, columns we have here, allows to identify the field. Then on a field, 
we have a target value, so a value that we expect to have, and we have a matching operator that can be used to make the comparison between the target value and the value we find in the, in the packet that has been sent. And if the matching operator match, so if all the matching operator for rule description match, then we can apply compression decompression with some uh, um, with some action that has been defined by the standard. So what we you see that we have this description, and what we did when we developed the standard was to make things generic. It means that we do not impose uh, our matching operator. We do not impose only these compression decompression action, but we give a lot of flexibility. And if you want to develop your own uh, uh, operator, it's possible if you see an interest for some protocol. So for those we have to deal right now, it leads to four matching operator and six to seven uh, CDA compression decompression action. But here we want to keep a lot of flexibility because this way we can make the protocol evolve. So where Chic is totally different from some protocol is that we are not flow oriented. It means that if you look at protocol like the old Van Jacobson that was used in the modem or more recently, the rock protocol that you use, for example, when you do voice over LTE, you uh, the first thing the compression mechanism does, does is to identify a flow and then apply uh, the, the compression on that specific flow. With Chic, we don't have this. In fact, we still we continue to be in the datagram paradigm of the internet, which means that each compression is independent of the other which gives much more flexibility in the way we will process the information. And that's why, for example, when I give you in the previous slide, the list of CDA, we don't have, for example, a Delta CDA that you find in, uh, in ROC, because if you have a Delta, so a difference, it means that you need the previous packet to make the, the difference. And here we don't want that, we just want to be independent from one to the other. So that's a, a main difference, and in this way, we keep the behavior of the internet. And as I say, it can be adapted to any protocol, not only the IPv6 UDP co-op stack, that is the IETF stack for IoT. So just to give you an example, here we have uh, why it's interesting to link a device to the internet. So here we, we have a very simple example that uh, resume what you have right now in LoRa, in Sigfox, and even in narrowband IoT, when you are using uh, an EDD, no uh, non-IP data delivery, it means that your device is sending information on the network. It arrives to a central point that can be the LNS in case of LoRaWAN, can, can be the SCAF in terms of uh, narrowband IoT. And here the SCAF for the LNS is configured to send you, for example, through a post, the information to the application. And here, in fact, what we are building is a point-to-point -point link between the device and the application. What we do with Chic look, may look a little bit similar. It means that you have a device. This device will send a Chic rule ID plus some uh, residue and the data. You configure it and you go to a core Chic, and the core Chic will reconstruct the IP layer by putting uh, IP UDP co-op and do, for example, a post of the data. And it can be repeated several times. In the World Forum uh, IoT tutorial we gave, we make a demo, or for example, in that case, we change the application, which is just a co-op server, and we make the URE unavailable. And in that case, we have the application that send back a 404 message notification saying this page doesn't is not accessible. And what we can do, so here we can have a device that is very simple, just send data on some very simple chic residue. And when you receive this error message, can change a period and say it's no worth to sending every minute. Now I'm sending every half an hour because I know that nobody is processing my data. We can do it, uh, it's a work under uh, uh, that we are doing right now at the ITF. 
is that we can also use ICMP notification. And for example, if the server is inaccessible, then we will have some ICMP error message that will be generated by the internet network. And we can also inform the device and the device will reduce his uh, emission and this way save energy until the network is repaired. So that's a very small uh, coupling between the device and the internet, but it uh, offers some nice properties. So to, to look uh, to Chic, how it was designed. So Chic, in fact, the internet is something very generic. It means that you develop a, a protocol for everybody, for every kind of application. In Chic, we change the paradigm because we have a point-to-point -point association. It means that the device and the Chic uh, core must have the same context, the same rules. But what happens when you develop a device? you may have several devices that will act the same way. So it means that in uh, the model, it means that the chic core will have a, a copy of the rule for each device. Of course, in, when you do implementation, you can do optimization. But the formalism model is to have a rule for each device. So what we, what we can see in the future is that when you have an, some devices that are well uh, popular on the internet, it means that you will have a set of rules that will be used by a large number of devices. For example, you can have compression for UDP, IP UDP co-op for very constrained devices, as I explained just before, just to send your co-op message and receive some feedback when there is problem on the internet. We can have also the STEM protocol stack but we can have rules that are adapted to another kind of traffic, for example, lightweight M2M. Two years ago, in a Globcom publication, we show that we can have very nice improvement of lightweight M2M using Chic, and we save a lot of energy uh, when we, we put that in place. And of, of course, you can have over category, and I talk about metering industry, and with Florians, we can have we, we develop also some. Uh, context, some rules that can be applied for uh, specifically for DLMS. So it's a standard used by a frequent meter. So here, when you see that, you see that we will have a kind of crystallization towards some rules that can be used by a group of devices. We have these rules that are common, but with Chic, we have the possibility to go back to IP. So we don't lose about interoperability. And here we introduce also a possibility on the internet to have some specific format, some specific usage, but with the possibility to go back to the generic format. And it's something that we, we have published with uh, people from uh, Huawei in particular. It's, they made a, a proposal on saying that IPv6 was not that good because you have sometimes the IPv6 address is too big and on the network situation, the IPv6 address is too small. And here we say that, okay, but with Chic, you can for uh, IoT where IP of course, IPv6 can be viewed as very, very big, then you can have some adaptation that makes you IP, make IPv6 uh, available on this device. So just to, to go back on the compression, here I show a packet space. It means that in blue, you have the internet as it is right now, which means that we can take all the possible values that we, uh, we can have on packets. So it's very, very huge space. And with Chic, in fact, what we do is that we define rules and these rules will cover a space of uh, this uh, packet space where we can do compression. We can have also, is not uh, pure paving, we can have overlapping rules and two compression can be applied. And of course, the best choice is to take the rule that gives the better compression. But here we are still very generic. And there is values that we cannot define when we uh, build the rule, for example, a UDP port number is selected by the device and we don't know at the beginning what it is. So we can force a specific value, but it's not regular internet. 
So if we can inform both sides that a value in a rule must be this value, then we can have higher compression rate. And it's what we are doing right now. And of course, if we want to do that, we have to do it with standards. So here I try with DALI to make an illustration of what I wanted to show, but I'm not very pleased by the, by the result. But the idea is to have an iceberg because I will talk about Young. I know Young is a way to, to create data model and it's a lot of uh, documentation, a lot of things to read, to understand. It's very, very strict. You have a lot of formalism when you do it. But if you follow and make this huge effort to follow this formalism, then you can have a very, very compact result and it can be applied to IoT. And there is new format for young data model I will present you on this uh, new format will be helpful for, for IoT and uh, even more. So what is uh, Shix, uh, what is young? So we can of course, uh, uh, ask uh, ChatGPT what is young, and they will say that it's a data model, that modeling language that has been used uh, to, uh, especially at the beginning for network configuration protocol. And now it's used by uh, many entities like uh, IETF, but also you have the Broadband Forum, you have uh, Open Config, I IEEE, and a lot of organization, Open Delight, a lot of organizations are now defining their young data model for then their uh, protocols. So just to, to explain in a few seconds what is uh, young. So you have the IETF that defines the language and this modeling language can be used, as I said, by different uh, uh, standardization bodies, by different manufacturers to develop their own model for their specific uh, product. What is interesting also for Chic is that it's extendable. It means that you can create your own module and plug it to existing modules. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. And then once you have developed your model, you have to put your data following this model and you have different way to do the serialization. The oldest one and it's called with NetConf is to use XML representation. And then with NetConf, we have, you have a possibility to, to do a commit. It means that you are, it's possible to change the configuration at the same time on different equipment. There is also another way to do the serialization based mainly on JSON. And it creates called, it's used HTTPS. So it's more close to REST API and uh, it's based on uh, say HTTPS. And there is a new, uh, representation that is uh, almost finished at the ITF. It's called CoreConf. And CoreConf is based on CBOR. So CBOR is a, a binary JSON that is much more compact. And instead of HTTP, is using uh, CoAP. And here we can have some very nice results. For example, here you, you have a, a rule that is uh, defined in an, our implementation of chic that is called open chic and here you have the rules so if i transform it into xml the result will be about uh, 45 46000 bytes just to describe the the rule if we go in json it's a little bit better not that better here but i think that you have a lot of indentation, uh, indentation here but usually json is half the size of xml and if we go to CBOR, then we have a very nice result because we divide about by, uh, so more, of, uh, not five, but more than 10 for, for the compression. So CBOR is a very compact way to represent our information. Um, with that, we are compatible also with uh, IoT constraints. So we want to go further in that direction to make uh, improvement to, to Chic. And of course, all these representation are equivalent and you can move from XML to JSON using the Young model. And you can move from JSON to CBOR using something that is called a SID or a SID file that contains some mapping I will uh, explain now. So what does 
young is to create identifiers. These identifiers are unique because your young module has his own unique identifier, and then you concatenate identifier you create in your young model. So here, for example, I have some identifier we can find in the young data model. And when you look at the representation, it's ASCII. So each character is a byte. So it can be, for example, fragmentation mode icon error takes a lot of bytes to be sent on, on a wire. So what SID is, is a number that is unique and that be, will be assigned to a company, to a standardization organization, and nobody else can use this, this range of number. So here, just for the example I took for the uh, young data model for Chic, I took one, one million as the value for the, for the seed. And then each identifier we have in the young data model, we have, will have a unique number. And nobody else in the world can use this space to create his own identifier. So here we have identifier that we find inside the rule, like for example, what is the, uh, the field ID? For example, it's IPv6 uh, version or IPv6 uh, dev AI. So here it's a value you will put inside your data model and you have values that define your data model. And this one can be delta encoded. I will not go into details, but this delta encoding allow to reduce the information. What we can see is that we have the same structure between the CBOR on the left. So here's the CBOR represented in a Python module. And on the right, you have the JSON file. So what you have is just numbers in one side. On the other side, you have ASCII characters. And so this way, you can have a very simple mapping between these uh, two structures. And what we do with the compression here with the core conf is just changing the ASCII by numbers. And this way, we have something very, very compact. Now, to, explore, to use this data, so what allows, Young allows you to create is a, a tree. And this tree, so for example, for chic rules, you have different kinds of rules. All the rules are identified by a rule ID. Inside compression rules in blue here, you have also field description. And the field description are identified by this three value. And then you have value, for example, in the target value. And they are also identified by a key. So if you know the path in this tree to go to what you are looking for, then you can uh, browse the tree very easily. And so here, in fact, if you want a specific value in the young data model, you just know, need to know the value of all the keys to access to this information. So it means that it can be very compact in representation. For example, here I give you a representation of core conf using a get. So you do a get, then a slash C, but say that I want a specific information. Then in blue, you put the seed number of the field you want to get on your young data model. And then you give the path to go to that, it means all the value, RL, uh, FPD, that allows you to get to this information. And if you do something else that is a fetch, so it's like a get, but in binary, to access to one value, you need only about 20 bytes to get this value. And if you want to, and the result you see will be uh, quite compact uh, also. And if you want to change a value, you can do a patch. And here you have a structure that is not, if you know JSON, it's something that looks strange, but in CBOR it's possible. Here the key is an array. And inside the array, we give the path to reach a seed, and then we store the value. And so this request also is only 24 bytes. So it's very, very, very small things. And if you look at the implementation of that, what we do in uh, OpenShake is about 20 lines of Python to reach these results. 
So that's something that is quite amazing because as I say, you have to read 2000 pages of description of Fiong. You have to follow the formalism. You have to be very careful. But once you have done that, the result is very, very compact and can be implemented in, in constraint device. And the traffic also is very, very limited. And it's universal. It means that here you have the range your range of SID. If someone wants to apply it to another category of data model, it's the same code, it's the same uh, procedure. So it's very, very, uh, very generic. So it means that with that, and it's, we have about to finish, we have finished the young data model. It should be published uh, today or tomorrow. It will be RFC 9363. And it describes the Young data model for uh, for Chic. Then, if when we will have our seed allocation for the ITF for the IANA, then we will be able to mani manipulate a context in both sides. So instead of having a static context, now we move to what I call a synchronized context. It means that we can change some value inside the, the rules and have a better compression. And so that's quite important because with that, we have, with Young, we have a common data model, but we define also automatically an efficient protocol. And if we go, want to go uh, to something more integrated, you can also manipulate directly the Young structure inside your devices, and it becomes also very, very, very efficient. So to, to conclude, I will say that, so to answer the question, why standard accelerates the development? It's because when you don't have standard, you try to optimize what you are doing and do only what you expect to do. But when you do that, you are blocking in, in one direction and it's very difficult to go in another direction. Another thing is that, for example, if I look, uh, you know well this hourglass model for uh, IETF uh, protocols or for protocols in general, but we can apply also this hourglass model to standardization organisms. For example, if we took the example of DLMS, so DLMS has a standard about IP. And LoRaWAN wanted to have a standard uh, to carry direct can ask to carry directly the LMS over LoRa1. If you do that, it means that you have to spend a lot of time to do the standardization. And so your product will be delayed until the standardization is over. Now, if you have another protocol that arrive like Muti, that is another attempt to do something like uh, LoRa1, then the LMS has to do again the standardization of the LMS over MyUT and you lose uh, again three years just for the standardization phase. Now you have narrowband IoT, you have to do the same. Now, if we keep IETF protocol, so DLMS already exists over IETF protocol. So what we have just to do is to apply another standard that is chic defined by the IETF. And this way we can carry DLMS on all these protocols. So this way we can go very quickly to the market and you don't have to do some specific uh, deployment for specific uh, technology. And what we see now is that, as I say, Chic was originally developed for uh, LoRaWAN, but we see that Chic is going to be adapted to all these uh, layer twos like Muti, WISE, uh, Wireless, uh, and also, uh, as I say, 4G, 5G, uh, 5, uh, and 6G. So there is work, we have work with Ericsson right now to see how we can apply fragmentation in 6G to have some lower than best effort tra transmission. It can be also applied to a satellite link, uh, drone communication. So we have a lot of use cases that are, are present. And the last slide is also how we can accelerate the, the deployment is that from now we have low power radio that works well and allows us to send with a very limited amount of energy information for uh, under, under a scope of uh, range of uh, 10 kilometers. 
We have also constraints protocol like uh, CBOR, like CoAP, that can be used on, on this. But each time you have to develop a new protocol, you have to do a lot of things. Now, with what I show you with young uh, and young data model, we can have also something very, very compact. And all the rest is generic, which means that if you want to push a specific information or a specific application on a device, what you have to do right now is just to develop the young data model and the rest, the protocol, the way you store the information on a device will be uniform. So it's a way also to uh, accelerate the deployment of new uh, IoT uh, usage and application. <laughs>